you talked about it changing the mood, that victory on, on, on Wednesday. Perfect timing, how vital was it? And I suppose we're talking about is it the kickstart you needed, bearing in mind you have had one very big win already this season? Oh, I don't know. It's I, I don't know why everyone makes now such a fuss of it. Of course, it changed the mood, but I didn't start. I didn't when I go into press conference and said, "Oh, it changed the mood massively." I got asked the question. Somebody asked me the question. I said, "Yes, of course, it changed the mood. How couldn't it?" Um, but we are now not. Even if people think that maybe that dumped that we um, think that's the only thing we needed to 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 beat Man City and nothing really to do with that um, we still have to figure out who is available after the, the Rangers game for, for the City game and um, then we will make a lineup and then we will go in there if we would have lost we would have give it a try um, and now we give it a try um, at Anfield with our people in our bag against the best football team in the world. So um, that's a big challenge, but it always was and will always be. And um, we always were looking forward to it and do it this time. I don't really want to touch on too many negatives after such a, a great result, but is there still a concern about conceding the first goal, especially on Sunday, you've got Erling Haaland around, you know, are you, are you preparing any special plans for him? So first goal conceding, yeah. <laughs> It's a concern. Look at the situation. We played. We played really good football in this in the, in the early stages of the game, and in this in this moment where we where, where we lose the ball, um, in a moment where every team in the world opens up the pitch, in a moment when we start playing, um, and that's what we did. Uh, we lost the ball in a, in a moment where we were not compact because we couldn't be compact. And two passes later, after it is alone in front of the goal. So these things can happen. Um, unfortunately, if you lose the ball in the wrong moment, and um, that's what's happened there. Um, Apart from that, uh, what are special plans against uh, Haaland? All, like always, um, obviously when you play against, um, yeah, probably for sure the moment, in the moment the best strike in the world, um, you have to make sure that he doesn't get that many balls. Um, and that's what you have to defend before you come into the challenge with him, with himself. Um, so that's what we will try, but um, against City, obviously the problem is if you, if you close ha Haaland down, um, with too many players, then you open up gaps for all the other uh, world-class players. So that will not um, will not make life easier. But it's um, it's a challenge. It's a, a football problem, and we we try to find solutions. At the other end of the field, you've got world-class players of your own, and, and Mo Salah getting that hat trick on Wednesday nights. Was that the confidence boost that he needed, if at all? It helps for sure, definitely. You could see the goals were then all they were all different. The first one, um, yeah, I really think the, it was a block ball from from Diogo, and then Mo picks it up, brings it down, and then the reaction there, brilliant. Sees the, um, uh, he obviously, I think, pretty sure he learned from the um, from the first game against um, against Rangers. And the goalie reacted a lot of times really well because he knew when we will finish, and Mo was a surprising finish with uh, with the front of his foot and um, a really good goal. And then the other two, typical Mo, if you want, when he's when he's um, in the cheeky mood, in a confident mood. The second one was very special because I think the only one who saw that gap there in the short corner was him. And the second one is um, the third one was a, a brilliant, a brilliant goal as well. So um, bring it to the far corner. So all these things, um, we know they help um, for sure. But um, well, what can I say? The best thing you want for your strikers is that they that they um, that they score and they all scored or were involved in goals. That's good. And now we have to make a lineup for this game. Uh, just in terms of Erling Haaland, if I may, when did he first properly appear on on your radar? You, you described him as the best player, possibly or best striker. I think you said in the world at the moment. In the world, so yeah. When did he first? Properly Salzburg. Salzburg. Yeah, we played them. And what was it? What is it about? Him? Yeah. <laughs> I think when he was very young, younger than now, we could see the, the potential. It was insane. Um, I remember. I don't think he started against us in a home game, if I'm 100% right. I think he was injured, came on, or, or something like that. I don't know it exactly, but we were already pretty busy with thinking about him. I can remember that. How can you close him down? How can you. Um, Shut him down if you want. Um, he scored anyway. Pretty sure. Um, yeah, 
No, like physically, he sets new standards. So it's it's physically the the, the combination of of being really physical and technical and um, sensational awareness. Uh, his orientation on the pitch is exceptional. Uh, he knows always where the decisive gaps are. Barely offside. Um, reads that really well. Uh, so many things would make him a striker. Now in this specific case with City, um, some of the best. Um, players around him in the world, so in, in setting up goals, in finding the, the right moment for the passes, with Kevin De Bruyne, <laughs> Ilkay Gundogan, Bernardo Silva, Phil Foden, Mares, whoever, they all they all are really good at that, so that's a perfect fit, no doubt about that. And if we're talking about him and Mo, should we include Roberto Firmino, given what he's doing at the moment as well in that context? Bobby is in a really good moment, really happy for him, really, really happy for him. It's extremely helpful when the boys feel even it's for us, obviously not the best situ- the, the best moment um, we've ever had. Um, it's helpful when these boys at least still know where the goal is. Um, we just need to to spread the goals a bit more to different games. Let me say it like this: um, uh, we should not focus on one and then um, nine and then seven and, and then nil. That, that's but we we know that. Um, so no, how is that positive? Things always help all of us and the footballers as well. Thank you. Julia? Jürgen, do you feel it will have a different feel to this fixture this weekend because of the start that City have had and, and the season that you've encountered so far? Normally it's always been built as a potential title decider. Could be this year. Just not with us. <laughs> um, uh, no. Not really. Look, when we when we when you play City, it's um, results left and right are, are not really re- not really important because this game um, requires all your focus, requires all the things you know about football. All it's everything. I said it a couple of times. I enjoy preparing the game really, but it's um, anyway the, the, the biggest challenge you can face in football because football is all about closing down spaces, closing down players, um, having challenges right in the right areas, these kind of thing. And with City, it's always, if you if you are here, then if you close them down here, then they are there. If you close that gap, you open up that gap because the pitch is so big and we have only 10 players to close all the gaps. Um, so always a challenge. Um, so that, what I want to say with that, it's not that we now feel different or whatever and think um, it's a home game, it's Enfield, it's it's us against Man City. Yes, they have, they are, they are, they are in the moment definitely the best football team in the world. That's how it is. But we will give it a try anyway, knowing there are no guarantees. Uh, but we, we know we get help from uh, a full end field and we, we try to use that. Jürgen, yeah, um, just going back to what you just said there about the, the enjoying the preparation for a game like this. You and City have been the dominant teams for the last few years now. How how much do you enjoy pitting your wits against um, Pep and, and his team, both as challengers and also on a tactical level as well? Very much. Very much. It's it's not that I don't enjoy playing other games, but this is just a different challenge because they're good everywhere. So that's how it is. Um, there are no weak points really. Where say, okay, if we can do that, then they might struggle here or there. You know, there's not a lot. To be honest, but that's why they are the team they are, um, and um, no, it's it's a job to do. That's what we do, and yes, we know. Obviously, we have a couple of good results against them, not enough <laughs> for for winning the title more often. But um, we were, most of the games we were really in the game, and that's what was always very important. First and foremost, you have to be in the game. You need to have your own moments. You, know, you cannot. Uh, there are moments where you have to suffer. It's always the case. Where they let you run or make you run, and then, uh, but there are other moments where you have to be dominant as well, and that's what we will try. And um, that's a, yeah, find the right balance for these moments is the, is the challenge.